I don't think there's a college that doesn't have its fair share of legends. Stories range from the ghost of the girl who was pregnant with the football coach's child to the creature that roams a building at night, and everything is said to kill you in the most horrible fashion if you run into it. Of course, my school, Miskatonic University, up in Maine, was no exception. In addition to the obligatory ghost stories of the suicides and murder victims still haunting the grounds, there was a story of an evil creature that liked to torture its victims by scaring them for days on end before killing them. The thing is, you have to call this monster, invite it to hunt you. The monster is called Achilles, and it feeds on the terror. Yeah, right? It's brilliant. Call up an otherworldly horror to come and torture you. But there were tons of people who did this, and they didn't die. It was some sort of rite of passage. Frats and sororities had it as part of their initiation ritual. They would take the new kids out to the old, run-down building on campus, and despite its sorry state, it was still usable. There just wasn't any classes being held in it. Now, that wasn't common knowledge, though. The members would send the pledges in and have them call up Achilles. The pledges would do the ritual in the men's bathroom, and then someone in a mask would jump out and scare the bejesus out of them. And most of the time, the kids would run screaming out of the building, and sometimes they would go deeper into the building and get lost, which meant that all the lights would have to be turned on and a search would go on until they were found. What a great way to get people into your frat. Give them heart attacks and or mental issues. But then my friend Tiffany told me and my girlfriend, Alexa, that she had found the actual ritual and where it was supposed to be done. I didn't really want anything to do with it, and neither did Alexa. We told Tiff not to do it that it's not a good idea to mess with things that aren't of this world. And of course, she didn't listen. And I remember when it happened. It was at the end of November. It was a dark and stormy night. I was lounging on the couch in the apartment that Alexa and I shared just off campus, playing Mass Effect for the 28th time. Alexa was sitting at her desk nearby, playing some Facebook games on her laptop. Remember that ritual Tiffany told us about? Alexa asked me. Vaguely, was my muttered reply. She has a status saying that her, Mark, Tanya, Steve, and Jeff are going to perform it tonight. That was about three hours ago. What time is it now? It's 9.27. I wonder if they're still alive. I wasn't taking it seriously. Probably not, she said in a similar tone to mine. A while later, the phone rang. It was right next to me, but I was shooting people, so obviously I couldn't answer it. I quickly checked the caller ID. It's Tiff, I said as I tossed it to Alexa and went back to shooting people, but with the volume down a bit more. I didn't really pay attention to the call. I was too busy trying to snipe some mercs, and Alexa had gone into another room. I'm not sure how long the call lasted, but it was long enough for me to get out of that area in the game. Find a save point, Alexa called out to me. We've got to go get him. Ugh, why? I asked, saving and shutting down the system. They did the ritual and they're scared out of their minds, she replied as she put on her coat and grabbed her purse. Okay, so where are they? I grabbed my coat and keys. The old mental hospital. Why am I not surprised? We went out to the car and started towards the old mental hospital that was just outside of the warehouse district of the city. And it was then that Alexa had reminded me what Tiffany had told us about the ritual. The location for it has to be a place where great fear has been felt. The mental hospital was perfect for that. And at night with no lights on. You have to have 27 black candles, and after arranging them in a specific pattern, light them. Then everyone who is participating in the ritual has to stand in the middle of the symbol that the candles form, 
and start chanting a challenge to the demon. And you have to use its actual name. Not Achilles, which is the bastardized version of it. Now it takes 27 times of saying the chant for it to work. And if it works, then the candles are supposed to go out. And then you have to run for your life because the creature, or demon, or entity is now hunting everyone who took part in the ritual. Supposedly, this thing feeds off the fear that is generated by its hunt. And it will try to terrorize you for days before finally killing and eating you. Not necessarily in that order either. From what Tiff told my girlfriend, it succeeded. Now I didn't believe that some creature had been summoned from the ether to wreak terror on these dunder-headed college students. I figured that someone was playing a prank on them. I mean, they posted it on Facebook for crying out loud. It didn't take very long to get there. Only 15 minutes and that was due to hitting every single stoplight on the way. It was still raining hard when I parked in the old asylum's lot. No lights were on in the parking lot and the big building was completely dark. The only sources of illumination were the street lights and the occasional flashes of lightning. We got out into the cold rain, using the small umbrellas we kept in the car as protection against the weather. I pulled our flashlights out of the back of the car, a 3D cell LED mag light for Alexa, and a big 6D cell mag light called Bessie and the ultra-bright Zenin bulb for me. With our flashlights in hand, we headed into the building. The front entrance wasn't locked, so we stepped inside the lobby. Alexa tried to call Tiffany, but the reception was horrible. The only thing she could make out was, It's coming for me. And after hanging up, Alexa looked at me and asked, Time to search. Should we split up? Yeah, sure, was my reply. That way it can eat us easier. Good, she said, and we both looked around. I feel like I'm walking into a horror story. Should we skip to the end and just go down to the basement and... And then a scream from upstairs cut her off. We both headed up the stairs that were in the main lobby of the asylum. There was another scream, one filled with even more terror than the first one. It sounded like it was on the third floor, so we ran that direction. It took a moment on the third floor landing for us to catch our breath. Neither one of us was in good enough shape to really run, much less run up three flights of stairs. As my girlfriend and I were wheezing on the landing, my light hit something big and odd looking, but it vanished just as quickly as I saw it. Tiffany was on the floor against the wall right next to where I saw whatever it was. Alexa went over to her as quickly as she could, and Tiff grabbed Alexa and sobbed against her. I continued looking around, keeping an eye out for whatever it was that had run off. And finally, after a few moments, Tiffany regained some composure. What the hell was that thing? I asked. It was Ark, Tiffany started to say, but was cut off by Alexa. Don't say its name she said to Tiff. Tiffany nodded and continued. It was the creature that summoned by the ritual. She managed to finally stammer out. I looked at Alexa and she had a very concerned expression. She looked up and spoke in the tone that she uses that I knew better than to argue with. We need to leave now. I gotta find the others, I stated. There's no way we can leave them here. We both helped Tiffany to her feet. All right, we stick together and then we search for the others. We began searching, Alexa staying right next to Tiffany. The beast already knew we were there, so there would be no need to remain quiet. We moved through the halls of the third floor, calling for our friends. We heard the sound of someone running down the hall. I shined my light and hit Steve right in the eyes with the bright beam. His face had no color and his shirt was covered in blood. I caught him as he reached us and practically collapsed. It got Mark. He stammered out between breaths. It ripped him right in half. Steve grabbed me and started screaming. We've got to get out of here. No, we've got to find Tanya and Jeff, I told him. 
Why don't you calm your ass down and we'll get them and then we'll get out of here. I tried speaking to him in a calming tone, but it wasn't doing it. They're probably dead already, Steve shouted. Let's just get the hell out of here. We'll be fine if we stick to... Alexa started saying, but was interrupted by a blood-curdling scream that came from below us. That's Tanya. I was already starting to run towards the stairs when Steve grabbed me. No, it'll kill you. Yeah, but we have to get Tanya. She's as good as dead, Steve shrieked in my face. Then we heard Tanya scream again. I grabbed Steve's arm and started dragging him along with me as I began the descent down the stairs. If we stick together, we'll be fine, I told him. Steve tried to fight against me, but, but I've got quite a bit more muscle than he does, so I was able to drag his ass down the stairs. I let him go when Tanya came into my light. She was still screaming and was trying to get up from the floor, which was covered in blood. As was she. We managed to get her to her feet when I saw her. But a leg came out of the darkness and slammed it into her legs, causing her to fall back to the floor. I noticed that the leg wasn't attached to anything. I managed to run over to Tanya and shine my light down the hall where I saw it. And it stood, over seven feet tall, and its skin was dark and shiny. The thing's mouth was large and vile looking. Its eyes held a terrible presence, burning terror into my very being. In one of its grotesque hands was Mark's body. Well, what was left of it. And its other hand pulled the last limb, an arm, and threw it at us. I ducked under the arm and grabbed Tanya, hauling her to her feet. I shouted, run at the top of my lungs, shoving Tanya towards the stairs, and I heard the thing laugh as we ran towards the stairs to the first floor. The exit, we just needed to get out of the building. I was the last in line as we hit the first floor. Steve was first to the door and tried to open it, but it wouldn't budge. Alexa shined her light on it, revealing a glob of black goo stuck to the doors, preventing them from being opened. We heard the laughter of the creature. It was on the stairs, coming for us. And Steve took off down one of the hallways that went off of the lobby, and the rest of us followed. I looked back behind me and I shined my light. The creature was following us, scuttling on the walls. And that was not what I wanted to see. I turned back to make sure I didn't get separated from everyone else. But I knew that this thing was going to catch us soon if we didn't manage to get outside. Steve dug down yet another hallway, continuing to run at a breakneck speed with Tiff, Tanya, and Alexa right behind him. And I was at an ever-increasing distance behind them. I heard Steve hit something before I rounded the corner. A door leading outside. It's locked, Steve wailed frantically trying to get the door open. I can't get it open. The girls caught up to him and started trying to help. The door had a window in it, one with the metal netting in it to keep people from breaking in or out. Somehow we had made a few turns and I could see into the parking lot. Our cars were just a little ways away. Salvation was just one doorway. I skidded to a halt as I reached them and looked back behind us. The monster was nowhere to be seen. I don't see the thing. I called out. Maybe we lost it. Tiff sounded hopeful, almost pleading. No, it knows where we are, Alexa replied. I took up a position to be able to keep a lookout as they worked on getting the door open. The door was at the end of a short hallway with rooms to both sides and the crossing hallway a little ways away, so I knew that it only had one way to come get to us. I stood shaking with fear, watching for this thing to come for us. And just then, Mark's disembodied head rolled into the intersection and stopped, his lifeless eyes looking at me, his face frozen in an expression of sheer terror. And I finally screamed, and so did everybody else.
I heard Tanya and Tiff start sobbing. Alexa was whispering something and Steve just started pounding on the door. As I stared at Mark's head, the bulb on my flashlight popped, plunging the intersection into darkness. And looking back, I saw that Tiff and Tanya had dropped to the floor and were holding each other, crying uncontrollably. Steve had stopped pounding on the door and went to the ground, crawling up in a ball, and Alexa was staring at me with wide eyes, her flashlight still on. Look out, she yelled. My gaze returned to the intersection and no more than eight feet away from me was the creature, illuminated by Alexa's flashlight. It was unlike anything I'd ever seen before. Seeing it from a distance had spared me the full view of this thing's horrific features, but this time I saw the whole thing in detail. The creature's shiny black skin was stretched taut over its skull and its mouth was full of vicious-looking teeth. I could smell its breath, the scent of rot and death and decay. Its arms were misshapen, unnaturally long, and too thin for its size, with large claws at their ends. But its eyes were the worst, vile dark pools of malevolence. I stared at them and saw what this monster was going to do to us. I could see the horrors it was going to inflict dancing in them. I screamed in terror and it screamed in joyous laughter. It stepped towards me, its tongue sliding over its thin lips, dripping sickly green bile. Fear shot through my entire body and my mind no longer worked. I was so filled with terror that I could no longer think. And this creature, it somehow knew it. Its evil grin broadened. Then its head violently snapped back. The creature brought its face back down level with mine, and I could see that it was angry. I shrieked again as sheer horror filled me. This time, the beast was struck down as my non-working flashlight slammed into its forehead. It reeled backwards from the blow and came at me, trying to rake me with one of its large claws and it fixed me with its terrifying gaze again. Terror flooded me again, causing my mind to step out of the way one more time and let my body take over, and ducking under the misshapen limb, I smashed its wrist with Bessie, and grabbed the creature with my free hand. Kicking the thing's leg out from underneath it, I took the monster to the ground. That was when the terror turned into sheer rage. This time, when its eyes met mine, I saw fear and confusion in them, and I'm sure it saw the rage in mine. I brought Bessie down onto the beast's shoulder, and Alexa smashed the thing's knee. Repeatedly, we pummeled the thing, using our flashlights as clubs, until I brought Bessie down onto its skull one final time, cracking it open like an egg. I don't know how long we stood there. But when I finally regained my senses, the police were there. All of us were questioned, and I know they didn't believe our story. A group of federal agents arrived and took over the investigation. They convinced the police that it was an emaciated gorilla that we had killed, and I wasn't going to argue. Heck, Steve, Tiffany, and Tanya actually believed the story after a bit. Only Alexa and I remembered what truly happened. They eventually found Jeff. He'd been strapped down in one of those electroshock therapy rooms. I guess the thing was going to save him as a snack for later. Alexa and I were given the option of assisting the federal agency. I can't go into the details. But we said yes. <laughs> 